Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? So in today's video, I know it's been a while since I dropped the last one, but it's been focused on, um, I would say, centralizing our systems, building out our client backend infrastructure so that everything is automated, everything is delegated, and ultimately we get the best results for our clients. So um, this is why I've been a bit MIA. But with that being said, what I've noticed from client to clients, um, I'd say for the month of July, we've onboarded three new clients. And from this month, or I would say from the past 30 days of working with each client, right? Um, here's something I've learned. Here's something I've noticed. And I just want to share my experience with you guys so that you guys are aware of like, let's say you do sign your first amount of clients for the TikTok offer, or especially even like down the line, even just working with other e-com brand owners. And let's say you're e-com brand owner yourself, you're watching this. So um, I want to break down the key components of what I've noticed from brand to brand, how you go about these TikTok methods, what works, what doesn't. And ultimately, how can you get results on the TikTok platform, especially with everybody pushing more towards the space as um, marketing as a whole is really just shifting towards the style of just UGC TikTok content. So um, with that being said, I made this quick doc. And over all, I just want to cover ultimately like my experience working with these brands and ultimately what we're doing to get results for each and every brand. So. Um, everybody's coming to the TikTok wave as as everything's just rising and everything's it, TikTok has grown in popularity, I'd say over the past six months, especially um, post 2020. So we've just seen a huge surge of TikTok and ultimately people jumping into the space. Um, even though I think we're still somewhat at the peak right now, um, I believe like probably six months or even four months from now, it's going to get a bit saturated with everybody in it anybody and everybody just pushing the crap out of this offer. So this is what's going to happen, right? Here's what I predict. So let's say in six months, we see a huge surge, more advertisers to get onto the TikTok platform, what's going to be more competitive, right? So what's the underlying factor that separates like a good brand from a great brand to get results and scale consistently on the TikTok platform? Well, that simply is just the UGC, right? Because all in all, you can't rely on ad copy, you can't rely on static photos anymore. Especially with, I believe Facebook had an update as well, where they're pushing more towards this UGC style of content, right? So in order for you to get results on the TikTok platform, you need content that sells. You need content that doesn't really seem like an ad to uh, draw attention, draw eyes, to get people to purchase and, and check out your page, right? So with that being said, at the end of the day, right, um, this days of just relying on ad copy and static photos is really just coming to an end. Um, I mean, there's, you can still get results on Facebook. I'm not saying like you can't just run like a static photo and not get results, but more so like this is the future, this is the direction of where everything's headed, right? So here's how we go about creating UGC. First things first is every brand is different. We want to isolate all the key variables, right? Especially if they've never spent a dollar on TikTok. We want to make sure that we separate what we're testing and have limited variables at first so then we can figure out, okay, what are results from this specific test from the up to the learning phase? What are we going after? Ultimately, what changes do we need to make to then um, produce consistent results? So the type of content you make well, that generates conversions, this is a key factor, right? So in terms of, of content, how we go about structuring each variable and, and how we go about testing. So not every piece of UGC is the same, especially when we're doing our first initial tests of, of tests or launching different variations of ad content and ad creatives. So with that being said, we like to stick to, even if we're working with creators, right? We like to have them place and shoot 10 videos of that UGC and then have another creator shoot another 10, right? So let's say we work with a brand, they want us to produce 30 pieces of content for their, um, uh, to launch ads, right? Typically we're only sticking with three creators per client. Cause as mentioned before, we want to isolate variables. If we were to add like five or 10 different creators and, and they each shot like maybe one or two videos, right? It's too big of a sample size. We don't know which creator gets better results. We don't know what type of ad creative works really, really well because every single creator creates brings their own unique style to the way they shoot content, right? Because they're not robots. These are human beings at the end of the day and they bring their own personality to the specific type of content, right? So that's first thing we do in terms of isolating variables, testing different scenarios and seeing which creator pairs up with what brand and, and gets the best results possible. And then from there, let's say we have one creator, they deliver like solid results. Um, then we just get them to create more variations of that style of content to then proceed to scale, right? So format of content structure, I mean, literally the attention span of somebody on the TikTok platform is literally, I believe it's what, three seconds? 
before they swipe up to the next um, piece of content on the for you page, just because TikTok is a scrolling platform, right? And especially when people are on the for you page, they're typically just there for to chill out, like they're there to get away from whatever they're doing in their normal, normal lives. So with that, right, they don't want to get ultimately bombarded with ads, because ultimately, it's just like ads disrupt the human nature and the human psychology of what they're on the platform for, right? So it's very important that within we keep these ad creatives that we're launching on the platform very very short 15 30 seconds i've seen even ad campaigns get results at around like 11 second mark right but from experience 15 and 30 seconds is a sweet a uh, sweet spot for the length of ads anything longer than 30 seconds will ultimately just affect performance and nobody's going to stay for the whole 30 second of um, your creative so um, as i covered right people don't like ad scene on the for you page right they just there they want to watch content that is uh, tailored to them even if that's like watching skits or i don't know like every person's algorithm and what they consume on the for you page is very very different but with that being said for every ad creative utilized there has to be a theme around the content right we can't just create like organic content with no structure no framework because then at the end of the day that's not going to get purchases that's not going to get people to opt in check out the website and obviously go to add to cart and complete checkout so the way we I like to structure the creatives is simply like intro hook, body or the story, and then with the call to action, right? I want to keep it very, very simple. I don't want to add too many variables. I don't want to make this too long. I want to keep it short, condensed, concise, and people get straight to the point. They know what we're talking about, what problems we're ultimately solving in the market. So in terms of video structures, like what I've noticed with the TikTok platform, no matter what brand you're you're working with, or let's say no matter if you're e commerce e-commerce owner in the apparel fitness supplements um even like i would say eco-friendly sustainable niche you can literally build off all these frameworks of videos right because the way we shoot content for our clients is simple like we have a structure of like types of videos that we're going to test from those tests we'll say okay which style of content gets the best results and then from there we just create more variations on top of that right so typically you're going to see across the board similar amount of video structure that you can create without like reinventing the wheel so the most popular is like unboxing videos um, in terms of video structure, you have like the three reasons why I bought this product. I wish I knew this sooner about X stop scrolling. I found this online. You can even do like a trial on haul, especially for apparel. Like if you have multiple variations of clothing from there, like people want to see what it looks like on, they want to see if somebody were to try it on and, and what that would look like. Um, also the last pair of creative, like, here's what I love about this specific product. So for us, the key metrics to focus on, on the TikTok platform is click through rate. Right. What click through rate ultimately means is like somebody who comes across your ad, what's the percentage of them going clicking on your website? Right. That's the biggest factor here. Um, anything in terms of click through rate below 1%, that means there's something wrong with your UGC. Ultimately, it's not either attracting attention, it's not getting people to, to make the next step to go and proceed and click on your website, or it's just ultimately something's like from the intro to the hook, something's just lacking. And doesn't gather attention right so as i covered right anything below one percent just means your ugc is not attracting attention what we want to see in terms of a healthy ad creative if we're getting a click through rate anywhere from like one 1.2 1.3 even 1.5 or even like a two two percent or even a three percent right we know that okay the intro and the hook something's really good about that and if we see any drop off let's say if like we get a high click through rate let's say we get a high amount of ads to carts but there's not enough like not a lot of people are, are checking out then we know okay there's a drop off between which sector right so then we know it's like it's not the ad creative itself but something along of the website process right could be that the product's price too high could be other factors externally from the tiktok ad creative right but ultimately click through rate is probably the most important variable to see okay what is working for your ad creatives and it also depends on the brand and also depends on the product and what the price point is this is why like i mentioned before you might see some layoff when somebody adds to cart, but they don't initiate checkout could be like the pricing structure could be too high for the audience you're targeting. So, um, as mentioned, that's overall what click through rate means. This is what we look like to analyze. If we're seeing like, if we're in a testing phase, we put some budget tower to add creative and we're getting results and we see a click through rate above 1%. We know, okay, we're headed in the right direction. We just need to create variations on top of what's already working. Right. Add to carts. So, I see a lot of people, different opinions say, oh, look, you just need to optimize and go straight for complete purchases. Um, I've done that in the past. We've done it with other brands before and didn't get the best results. 
a lot of people don't understand what it means to really warm up the pixel and get out of the learning phase. So with that, our main goal is like our objective when we do launch, let's say a new range of campaigns, right? Or new ad creatives. Our main focus is to see, okay, how many ad to carts can we generate from this existing creative or what is the ratio from ad to cart to initiate checkout to complete purchase, right? The reason why we focus on ad to cart is simply put, uh, this is like the lowest barrier to entry for somebody to be interested in your specific brand, right? It's easier to get add to carts and to get complete payment. But with that being said, what this does is stabilizes the TikTok pixel because if we find an audience and the TikTok pixel finds a demographic that is adding carts and people that are interested. So then when we shift our focus and get consistent numbers of like maybe we're spending $100 per day, we get anywhere in terms of numbers, we get add to carts anywhere from like that 10 to 15 mark. We know, okay. Um, I would say actually higher 15 to 25 add to carts a day out of a hundred dollars spend. We know, okay, this is the audience that's working now after we get like 50 add to carts in a, I would say three day window, then we know, okay, if we go into complete purchase, we have the audience, we have the demographic. Now we can optimize and scale efficiently and get uh, results at a lower CPA because the TikTok pixel understands who we're targeting, who would, uh, works well and who would. Uh, purchase our products just from our initial test, right? So we kind of stack up. We go and add to carts, we go initiate checkout, and then from there we go into uh, complete purchases. And I know like with this structure and this framework, um, our CPA actually lowers and ultimately we're able to scale more effectively without wasting a ton of spend because we've done um, the, the hard part of finding our demographic, which audience interacts best with our specific ad creative and the goals and the objectives uh, we're going for, right? So when we're getting consistent add to carts, um, typically we're gonna see a CPA lower uh, overall as the TikTok pixel stabilizes. And then from there, as we go into shifting into initiate checkout, and then after that complete purchases, right? It's just a domino effect of like, um, you're, you're increasing spend, you're getting a decent CPA, you're seeing conversions come through, and ultimately you're able to uh, scale efficiently because you have enough data and the TikTok pixel understands who your target audience is, right? So with that being said, all in all, this is what's comprised of the TikTok market. And in terms of you guys implementing TikTok ads, a part of your e-com brand, the barrier to entry is actually higher than it seems um, just because you have to invest heavily into your content, right? Ad creatives typically fatigue, I would say anywhere from the second to third week mark. But that doesn't mean like you need to reshoot a ton of content at scale. What we do is like we take those, we have the influencers have the raw video and also they sh uh, reshoot in terms of different clips. Like we have the intro hook, bo body, call to action. From there, we take those single clips and then we rearrange them so that we can build on more variations. So the hack is like, let's say you shoot, you have a creator shoot one 30 second video, but they break it up in pieces. From there, you can take that same piece of content, rearrange them in a way where it's like, okay, you can reproduce anywhere from three to four variations of that content from that just one specific video. So at scale, let's say you shoot 10 pieces of content, you're able to actually make anywhere from like 30 to 40 new videos that are variations from what's already worked in the past. But that only works once you've cracked a code and you see, okay, which type of video structure works well with my brand, right? And that simply could be like the unboxing videos, three reasons why I buy this. I wish I knew this sooner. Like even, I forgot to add this, like maybe like a green screen video where like you see the website and then from there you click on the website and purchase, right? And that's not to say like you can implement all of these variations into one video, like an unboxing video, like let's say a creator goes uh, green screen, clicks on the website, purchases, they receive the product, they unbox it right then. They're like, oh, look, what I, this is what I bought. And then from there, you're able to get conversion. So um, sky's the limit with the amount of variations you can make, but more so this is just a breakdown of what is required for you to see results on the TikTok platform so that you guys are successful, especially in this e-com market with the economy and everything's, how everything is rolling out. I just wanna make sure you guys are aware of like, this is what gets results. If you don't do this properly, I have to go to someone in your network, ask questions, ask for help so that you're not just wasting a ton of ad spend um, doing inefficient uh, actions that are not going to get you the best result possible. Um, with that being said, if you enjoyed this content, right, uh, feel free to stay tuned, subscribe. Um, and yeah, more content coming soon. And if you have any questions about the TikTok platform and what that looks like, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Bye-bye.